experienced film photographers will tell you that sending your precious film through an x-ray scanner is not the right thing to do. Didn't take. Whereas TSA and x-ray scanner operators will tell you, oh, it's fine if it's under 800 ISO, send it right through the machine and it'll pop right out the other end just fine. After doing a little bit of research before my vacation, I came to a different conclusion. In this video, I want to share a little bit of the experience that I had traveling with film and how many x-ray scanners we had to go through on that trip. The first x-ray scanner we had to go through was at the airport flying out to Los Angeles to get on our cruise ship. And this is the exact face that I made when I found out we'd have to go through another x-ray scanner to get on the ship. But those angry demons went away real quick once I had my virgin mimosa on the boat. And before my wife could slip the diamond ring off her finger, I had already put all of my camera equipment and my film inside of our personal safe. I brought some Cinestill 400D some Kodak Gold, which I determined expired sometime between 1997 and 2004. I brought a roll of Ektar 135 millimeter, a roll of Acros 102, although that roll will not make an appearance in this video because I didn't use it. I brought some Cinestill 800T to shoot in daylight at 400 ISO. I brought some Fuji Pro 400H that I shot at 200 ISO in daylight. I brought some Fuji Pro 160 NS, which was given to me by my father-in-law. And then I brought some Portra 160 and some Portra 400, although the Portra 400 was not used in this video. Shocker. I guess now would be a good time to talk about the cameras that I brought with me. This is the Canon A1, a nice all-around camera. Not a lot of bells and whistles, but it offers you what you need and what you want. For lenses, I brought the FD 50mm 1.8 and the FD 28mm 2.8. This is what I brought for my medium format photography. I brought the Mamiya 645 in the 6 by 4.5 aspect ratio, which is also the aspect ratio of this video. Anyways, I really love the beauty of this 45 millimeter uh, lens. It's just got that giant lens element on the front. The 645 aspect ratio, because it can take 15 frames, poor roll over there on the other side, which I can't reach with my tiny paws, is the 80 millimeter 2.8 Secor C lens. It's roughly equivalent to a 50 millimeter when you're shooting full frame. And this 45 millimeter is roughly equivalent to a 28 millimeter. So overall, I had pretty much doubles in terms of, oh, don't like that. <laughs> I had pretty much the same setup in medium format versus full frame. Our first day on the cruise, we spent a lot of time eating food, lounging around, staring at the ocean, and draining threes on children like there's no tomorrow. On the day that we got to Cabo San Lucas, I decided I was going to go with Portra 160, a perfect fit for the Mamiya 645 on a bright and sunny day. I kid you not, the water didn't even look this good in real life. Hanging out at the beach was incredible. Up until we saw a, a local child get a fish hook stuck in his big toe. And then after that, 
we decided maybe it's time to go get something to eat. Between the food and being offered illicit substances, I wouldn't say that we had a perfect time in Cabo. It wasn't extremely pretty. It wasn't extremely relaxing, but I'm glad I took the pictures and they definitely transport me back to a time where it was just us and the beach and all the hundreds of people that were there. <laughs> This was almost the worst mistake I made on the whole trip. I didn't know that in order to get back on the ship, you'd have to go through an x-ray scanner. It makes sense in my head, but they should have told us before we got off the boat. Loading up this film right after we had our lunch dinner, I expected to be able to use this film at all of our stops as, you know, my cheaper alternative to be able to capture more photos on one roll. So instead, this roll pretty much sat on the boat for the rest of the trip. Mazatlan was one of my favorite places, not just because of the rich history and culture that was there, but because we had a guided walking tour and we didn't have to worry about being stabbed in the back by a rusty spoon. Baby, you give me ice and fire. I'm sure part of the reason that I enjoyed this location so much is because I was using Fuji film stocks, but we can debate about that later. At the end of our tour, we got to see some cliff divers that were jumping from about 50 feet, more or less, into very shallow beachside water with jagged rocks all around it. At the end of the day in Mazatlan, we had to go through another x-ray scanner to get back on the ship. And I hope you're keeping count of how many x-ray scanners we've had to go through, because I'm not. Puerto Vallarta was everything that you want your Caribbean vacation to feel like, except it was at Mexico prices. and we couldn't really complain. We took the day to just lounge on the beach and eat food, and that was all we needed. I didn't take a ton of pictures, but I was able to finish one roll of Cinestill 800T, and I really love these pictures. At the end of the day in Puerto Vallarta, we had to go through another x-ray scanner to get back on the ship, including the x-ray scan in order to get on our flight home. That brings our total to six x-ray scanners that were used on our trip. And now getting to the meat and potatoes of why I decided to make this video. Hopefully by this point, you've grown a little bit attached to these photos like I have. Uh, they're Maybe not clinically perfect, but they're definitely a mood and I wouldn't want them any other way than they are right now. They may say that film up to 800 ISO is safe to go through x-ray scanners, but it's not a barrier of being okay. It's a cumulative effect that happens on film. If you put your film through an x-ray scanner twice, it will have twice as much x-ray fog. Here you can see what effect five x-ray exposures cause to a roll of film. Thinking back on all the times that we almost had to send our film through an x-ray scanner, I cannot imagine what I would think of them if they had fog over all of them. Kodak made this super handy website that displays their testing of 
how film stocks react to x-ray exposure. I'm glad I didn't send my film through those six x-ray scanners that were used on our trip. The moral of the story is always request a hand check and if they're not budging, say that your film is 3200 ISO because technically you can push 100 speed ISO to over 800. Stay safe out there and keep shooting.